rectory most of these are being done in the morning down at the office so I do not disturb my housemate who lives above me the seminarian Josh today's readings were about uh, forgiveness and the importance of forgiveness which is not a not an easy thing but we want to have an attitude of being forgiving and for no other reason we want God to forgive us. Because the last line of the gospel is, Unless each of you forgives your brother from his heart, my father will treat you in exactly the same way. How did, uh, hold on a second, we're turning down Johnny. Johnny Lee Hooker's a little loud. Turn him down. Okay, that's the last line of the gospel. And the gospel tells the parable of a lack of forgiveness. The king forgives the first guy and the men's debt. The first guy goes out and sees a fellow servant who owes him a small amount, attacks him, chokes him, imprisons him. Other servants see this and run back to the master, to the king, report the whole affair, and the king puts the guy in the torture chambers till he's dead, till the end of his days. He will never be free of torture. And that's Jesus' warning. My father do the same to you. Forgiving somebody doesn't mean we approve of what they've ever done. We want to be clear about that. If somebody did a detestable act against you, we don't forget it when we forgive them. What we are letting go of is the bitterness, the anger associated with that act. We're trying to let our, our emotional state be free of them. They've already traumatized us enough. They've already done enough to, to traumatize us, uh, to uh, scar our life of whatever their offense is, and we're trying to move forward. You know, that's, that's the real challenge. It's not easy. I mean, I don't know how a victim of, of rape or abuse or prolonged torture gets past that without God's grace. But God wants us to be forgiving. And God knows what we've been through if we believe the story of Jesus Christ. He was tortured and humiliated and put to death. So he understands what it's like to be assaulted, to be tortured, to be dehumanized. He gets it. That's really the whole point of his passion. He understands our worst experiences by actually living them. Not just from the outside, Jesus Christ enters into the fullness of human life. What we believe about our, our Lord. But, you know, it's hard. I really try not to preach to people. Everybody's got to work through it at their own pace. But if you let uh, people live rent-free in your head, that's a terrible thing. You know, what if, what if the person who assaulted you is dead by decades? Your, your anger against them, your resentment towards them, is actually empowering them past the point of their death. And there's, pardon me, nothing to be gained by that. We want to be free in our living. We especially want to be free in our service to Jesus Christ, to God. Again, it's never approval. Everybody's going to have to face justice in the end on God's due time. We just refuse to live in the wound the wound of, of that uh, instance. You know, it's kind of like this. On one side, on one side of a dangerous act is victimhood. Perpetual victimhood. I am a victim. This uh, event defines me. On the other side of the coin is, I hate this guy so much, it will. I'll never forget it. And my anger towards him will define it. And need, both of those are traps. And we want to be careful of that. We don't want to be a perpetual victim. The bad things that happen to us do not define us. We will never forget them. Nor do we want to be a hostage 
to the emotional injury, the anger that it calls up. It's not hard. I mean, it's not. It's, it's very hard. It's not easy to get over. Got to pray a lot. Pray a lot. Got to find somebody to talk to. Got to say, find somebody to open your heart up to, to share your sorrow, so that uh, healing can begin to enter in. Anyway, you all have a great day. Good talking with you. Enjoy the uh, yellow room, new surroundings.